This is quartz adjacent to a garnet in a pressure shadow, and it's thoroughly typical of quartz that you see in thin section. Low relief, clear in plain polarized light, no pleochroism. When you cross the polars, you'll see it's essentially black and white and gray as interference colors. There's maybe a hint that this largest grain is starting to break up into smaller subgrains, um, but it's almost completely optically continuous. Um, it may be slightly yellowish because the thin section could be just a little bit too thick. This is quartz from a garnet quartzite, and I had to search through a lot of thin sections before I found one that shows these optical characteristics. When you cross the polars, this quartz looks almost completely black, isotropic, and that's because this particular grain has its C-axis pointing almost perpendicularly up out of the thin section. So the thin section cuts a nearly perfect circular cross-section through the uniaxial optical indicatrix of this, of this grain. The other ones are much more typical, black and white. Here's another quartzite. Uh, this one just has a lot of different grains, and you'll see that there are numerous grains in different orientations, but there are a couple that are also black in cross polars all the time. And again, it's simply um, because of an idiosyncratic uh, orientation that the C-axis is almost perpendicular to the plane of the section. Most of them um, just show the normal black and white interference colors. This is another garnet quartzite. And what you'll see uh, as the polars are crossed is that it has started to break up into different subgrains. This is really typical textures for uh, quartz, um, that it'll uh, develop these uh, different domains that are almost the same orientation, but not quite the same. And so it almost all goes extinct at the same time, but you can see some variations uh, from one side of the grain to the, to the next. More coarse grain quartz, and what you'll see here as the polars are crossed is that this one has started to break up more um, completely into subgrains. Um, and so this is what happens. The, the dislocations begin to pile up and they, they migrate to specific locations and then start to form new grain boundaries. Um, and so that's why it has this sort of modeled look to it. So here, this quartz is um, more deformed. You can't tell that in plain polarized light. Uh, but when the polars are crossed, you'll be able to see there's lots and lots of different subgrading boundaries. Um, and even those, um, those larger grains with the, um, the serrated edges um, have also started to break up into little subgrains. And then a still more deformed uh, example of quartz. So again, you really don't see much in plain polarized light. Um, but as you cross the polars, you'll see that it is uh, broken up into numerous little tiny grains, um, similar to the one before, just, uh, just more intense. Now, with this one, as soon as I cross the polars, you're going to say, Matt, that can't be quartz because it's yellow. And yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, when you cross the polars, this quartz grain is yellow because the thin section is a little bit too thick. And I would guess maybe 5% of my thin sections are a little too thick and the quartz is kind of yellowy. But you can still see that domainal extinction characteristic. Okay, and with this last one, I'm going to show you an interference figure. So here's a, a quartz grain, um, obviously centered. And when I cross the polars, you'll see it's almost completely black. Okay, and so that means that the C-axis should be pointing almost perpendicularly out of the thin section. So now if I go to higher magnification and put in the substage condenser and put in the cross polars, uh, and the Bertrand lens, then I see that C-axis. Now, if I put in the quarter wave plate, you'll see that it's um, blue in the northeast-southwest quadrants and orange in the northwest-southeast quadrants, and that tells you that it's uniaxial positive.